<laughs> how many, Welcome back to the Chill Spot Podcast, everybody. How many, how many episodes of our podcast do you think start with us doing like a little musical ting? Um, ting? A musical sting, musical ting, you know? Uh, you know, just, you know, just every once in a pond to replay, boy. Fucking <laughs> just throw the, throw the patois in there. Throw the Drake patois in there. Right. But how many episodes do you think start with, with us doing a musical thing? Oh, I don't know. Probably most of them. <laughs> right? Yeah. It's just a, And yet, here you are. Yeah. Back again. Back again. Guess who's back? I'll never stop. I know you won't. Nah. Yeah, that and fucking gross wet mouth noises. Oh, you mean like... No, no, no. Oh, you stop. Mean like, I regret bringing it up. Just I like regret bringing it up. I regret bringing it up. Uh, don't. Uh, don't. Uh, I want to break up. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I w- I'll save everybody's ears because I know Thank a lot you. of people listen to this podcast with Thank headphones you. on. This is like anti ASMR. Mm-hmm. We should really get into that, like ASMR, but like torture ASMR. Anti ASMR. You know, like yeah. that's just like it's like the chaotic be- ASMR. The beginning one is just like mouth noises, like wet mouth noises. Then it transitions uh-huh. into like jackhammering, <laughs> and, just, and like the very last one is like an argument Close. through a wall. <laughs> 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 you're, you're we can call it we can call it like Toronto ASMR. Exactly. <laughs> you're just like don't do this all the time. No, that fuck you, Phil. You're a piece of shit. No, you always you always do this. You always do this. Oh my god. Nah, I'm sure there's two sides to this story. <laughs> <laughs> That's awful. If you hear domestic violence, please report it. <laughs> no, like I I. I love how I, like, I appreciate the fact that you didn't go the domestic violence route. It was just like shitty boyfriend yelling yeah, at his yeah, girlfriend yeah, who yeah. needs to dump him. Mm-hmm. Like it's it's not the, the girl in this situation is not in danger, but mm-hmm. she deserves better. Uh, exactly. Yeah. She's probably really hot, and he's probably really dumpy. Did I ever tell you about like the worst case of hot girl dumpy dude to, um, that I ever saw? In no, my but life? what's their names and addresses? <laughs> I don't know their names, but I was working at a frozen yogurt store. But here's their addresses. <laughs> Please continue. I was working at a frozen yogurt store, and uh, these people came in, and, like, I, I like the way, I, I worked, I, I think I've said this before, the frozen yogurt store that I worked at was set up like Menchie's. Like, it was the same concept as, Men- it wasn't Menchie's, mm-hmm. but, like, same concept. Men- you know, you, Men- like, Menchertees. you come in, and you... Get your yogurt, and I don't pay attention to you until you're literally in front of me trying yep. to pay. I don't I, have to do anything else. We're like T-Rexes. Like, if, yeah. unless you're moving, I just don't see you. Exactly, exactly. So, like, these people came up, and I did, like, a double take when they got to the register because the girl was dressed in a beautiful, bright yellow bodycon sundress, and her hair was, like, curled. I think she had, like, belayage done. Like, it looked, like, fresh out of the salon. Looked real nice. Full beat of makeup, clearly on a date night, with her boyfriend, who was a scrawny little white dude with thin, 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 like, J-Lo in the early 2000s eyebrows, fucking like <laughs> like like a loose ripped like tank like tank top you know how like you know how like you know how like Yeezy season two had like the tears like the holes in the t-shirts yeah and like then the, and the, then that yeah. like trickled down into like the forever fa- 21 holes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it yeah. trickled down into forever 21 and they all started doing it he had one of those like forever 21 ripped t-shirts going on and he had like piercings in like his lip he had like snake bites do you remember snake yeah, bite yeah, piercings? yeah of course i remember snake bites in like 2000 and like 15 i was like what the fuck are you doing and um uh like an eyebrow piercing and a hat a white baseball hat written in the if you're reading this it's too late font but instead of that, it said, Daddy will make it better. What? <laughs> what and is I that was supposed like, to mean? I was like, lady. <laughs> I was 
like looking at her. She was dressed oh to the God. nines. They were clearly on some kind of date night, and that's what he fucking rolled up in. Also, what is? Th- I'm, I no no. I'm, I'm actually really stuck on that hat. Yeah. What no. Is that no. Get to stuck mean? on. The, please get stuck on the hat because it was messed up. Um, I don't. What is it? That daddy is making better. Why? Why is it in that Drake font? Like I don't. Yeah. Understand. Why? Why is the Drake font? I don't understand. <laughs> he like, probably probably not ordered it himself. What that album is about, but like well, whatever. I mean, that guy is so cool that he bought that hat, right? Yeah. Like he was at the store and he was like, "I'm the coolest guy alive." He's like, "I my fashion sense is so like out there that mm. I can afford to like go there." My dad calls me daddy, so I'm gonna buy this daddy hat. Ew. You know? Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> disgusting make everyone really uncomfortable but i i just like looked at her like i sh- i couldn't cat i couldn't get her to make eye contact with me which is like fucking disgusting but like i tried to like look at her and give her the like are you okay like blink if you're okay yeah give me the, give me that hand signal exactly you know? yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly yeah. like if you're if you're stuck here out of your own or not of your own volition mm-hmm. like let me know let me know girl i hate my job i will kill this guy you <laughs> i'll drown him in the yogurt machine absolutely like I have access to hand blenders, you know. Like I can <laughs> blend his fucking hand. I can like stick him in the freezer with the cheesecake bites. No exactly. one knows the difference. No one, no one, no one will know. We'll chop him up with those. Like, did you? I, I, I also worked we at a frozen yogurt chain. shop. Um, different store, but same chain. Yeah, exactly. Different store, but same chain. It's one of the things. Many one of the many things we bonded over early in our relationship. Actually, yeah. You actually, I mean, like I'll tell the story after, but um, about about our um, our kismet meeting. Right. That wasn't a meeting. But I was gonna ask, like, when you worked at your store, did you have one of those like presser fruit cutters? It was like a big fuck off. No, but thing. I know what you're talking about. We had them when I worked at um, Booster Juice. I, I guess I'll the... just say that out loud. Oh, like, whatever. I mean, we're I, don't, not, we're I not actually, I actually don't have juice. that many complaints about working for Booster Juice. And Booster Juice is delicious. It is. If delicious. you want to sponsor us, Booster Juice, I'll fuck up a mango hurricane. Any I would day. absolutely use the offer code Chill Spot to get ten percent off your next order of Booster Juice online. Don't, that's not, that's not gonna, <laughs> online. God damn it! Get a crate of Booster Juice. That's just loose shake. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the my box is like sopping wet. Oh, my boost crate is here. <laughs> <laughs> ew. <laughs> ew, ew, ew. You know, you know what's funny about booster juice is that. No, what's funny about booster juice is that. Um, so, like, booster juice. There are like two basic bitch smoothies that like everybody fucking gets. Their most popular smoothies are the mm-hmm. strawberry sunshine and the mango hurricane. But I can't even like fault you for like. I never got mad. I was like, oh, another strawberry sunshine. No, because it's delicious. Well, I mean, I mean, shit. There's a reason oh, why it's so popular. Oh, another mango hurricane. Yeah, it like tastes like mango all the way down. Like oh, it's yeah. it's it's tangy and tart the way that a mango should be. Mm-hmm. I hate it when I get mango stuff and it's too sweet. For like, sure, yeah. Like, like of course, like listen, like mango is be- is a beautiful fruit in that you can add sweetness to it and it still tastes good. But don't sell me on something that's supposed to taste exactly like a mango and it's like not tangy at all. Yeah. Mangoes are a little tangy, you know what I Ma- mean? Mangoes, like they should be. Mangoes I like it's funny, I, I'm actually not really big on mangoes, but I like mango flavored things. Yeah. Um maybe I didn't eat it at the correct ripeness, but last time I had a mango, it was like really sour and just like hard and like like. Oh, tough they shouldn't to eat. be hard. They okay. shouldn't be hard. Mangoes. Maybe it wasn't right. Mangoes. Enough. You kind of have to pick like um, like avocados, where like they should be a little bit. So- you should be able to stick your thumb in it a little bit. Oh, they should be a okay. little soft. They I, pro- should not I, be- I probably cut it too early. They then. should not be rock hard. Yeah, and they should be like a mixture of like red and green, not like all the way red or all the way green. Okay. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm still down to fuck up a mango because like. I think they're delicious. <laughs> mangoes are delicious, and ma- I actually I, I found my affinity for mango flavored things when I was in university. Uh, deep into deep into championship stoner cam, right? Um, oh, because mango right, right, right. mango intensifies your marijuana high, um, mm-hmm. due to some scientific bullshit that I forget the name of. Google it, guys. It's one hundred percent real. Um, I've never tried it because, like, well, and you're not for anything, but when my, you smoke, my tolerance is very you already low. get pretty high. I don't need to get higher. <laughs> yeah. Can, can I tell the story about that one time? No, okay. no, you can't. No, I'm not talking about. I'm not talking about. The, you're not the talking time about the you're shed? thinking of. You're not talking about the shed? No, I'm not talking about the shed. Okay. And I can edit this part out. Um, if whatever. Okay. But I uh, know I'm talking about the time we were in in, in in front of your house and we started and the Fleetwood Mac came on. You know what I'm talking about? No, I don't. Okay, but I think I think you can tell this story. Yeah, it's pretty harmless. So okay. Sam, I was when we first started smoking weed together, um Sam, Sam you, 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 like I smoked more weed than you did mm-hmm. at that point, mm-hmm. and I, I think I still do. No, it was like it took a while. Yeah, but you, you, you weren't like quite... I would be there and like come down and be done, and then you were like, "Time yeah, for like, another bowl." Like round three, yeah, yeah, here we go, yeah. Um, 
It's still getting high. For all intents and purposes, we are far less, I'm far less stony than I used to be. Mm-hmm. You know, I've really cut back on my consumption, but that's besides the point. Uh, Sam and I were hanging out one night, so we stepped outside because it was like 11.30, and what else are you supposed to do at 11.30 on a Saturday? But get high. So we went outside and smoked a bowl, mm-hmm. and we were listening to music at the time. Mm-hmm. And then Go Your Own Way came on, that Fleetwood Mac song. Oh, right. And I was in the middle of telling you a story, and you started jamming out so hard. Like, guys, you have to understand. <laughs> <laughs> Sam was air drumming. I got the spirit. I, I was legit in the middle of being like, yeah, so this thing that's like really like, philo- you know, I'm really thinking about it a lot. And you're like, I didn't hear and you. And you went, you oh, I love this song. And you started <laughs> air drumming. But then like, you know, most people when they air drum, like 30 seconds, you know, you do like a cool riff. You're like, oh, I love that part. You air drummed the final three and a half minutes of that song. <laughs> of Go Your Own Way. Just like, yeah. You know, because like there's that, there's that part at the end of Go Your Own Way, like the guitar solo basically yeah, yeah. go listen to go your own way if you, don't know if you somehow about. haven't heard about fleetwood mac <laughs> you, have you ever heard about rumors by fleetwood mac you, okay listen i'm just nobody saying ever, it's the most underrated nobody ever album. talks about it like nobody ever talks about it but rumors is one of the best albums of all time do we ever like chronicle that on this channel i think we did there was uh, but for for anybody who's new and like i don't know what episode to tell you to go back to so i'll just repeat the story but um Cam and I noticed there was a time, because we both follow the subreddit r slash music, yeah. which is like very generic, a, but every it, once in a while it's, there's it's a the, good it's thread. The sub, it's one of the subreddits that everyone is subscribed to. Yeah, yeah, but every once in a while there's a good thread. And we noticed that for a couple of months, like every once in a while, someone would be like, yo, like... Like listen to rumors for like the first time. I listen, I listen to rumors and it's like top 10, like one of the most underrated classic rock albums of all time. And I was like, no, it's not. No one it's thinks rumors is underrated. It's perfectly rated. It's a fantastic album. Yeah. I've, I've actually like listened to it a couple of times since then because like... Um, I'm trying to learn how to play Dreams on the guitar. That's cool. And then I just, like, I listen to Dreams so I can, like, realize how bad I am. And then I just get stuck listening to the whole album because it just sucks me in. But, like, nobody thinks that Rumors is underrated. Rumors, it was a smash hit when Rumors it came was out. It did really well. Extremely popular when it yeah, came out. Yeah. And it went on to be one of the most influential and iconic rock albums of all time. So fuck off yeah. with your 10,000 upvote post of, of like, songs- I heard Go Your Own Way for the first time last night. And I'm just saying that no one talks <laughs> about this song. Everybody talks about it. <laughs> Every fucking songs- buddy. One of the songs from that album was like Bill Clinton's campaign anthem. When he which was running that, for was president. That? It was, um... Uh, Go your own way. Stop thinking, thinking about tomorrow. tomorrow. Don't stop. It'll Voting for Bill Clinton. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> um, yeah, so it's perfectly rated. Like, it's... <laughs> it is so well like, celebrated. Nobody's talking about rumors, man. It's yeah, like, listen, dog. I don't know. I'm talking about with all my friends. I might be 14 years old, but I'm telling you, I just listened to rumors for the first time. <laughs> My favorite artists are Ed's XX Tentacion and Lou and do- Uzi Vert. And I just found out <laughs> about Fleetwood Mac. Yeah, yeah, really. <laughs> Y'all ever heard of Casey Musgraves? <laughs> um, I haven't. <laughs> yeah, actually, um, one of her songs came up in a shuffle one time, and it's it's not bad. I remember um, I mean, yeah, I'm when sure she she's good. she beat Janelle Monae. Uh, she be, she beat Dirty Computer for Album of the Year a couple of years ago, and I was she really beat a pissed lot of a lot of good albums for Album of the Year. And I was like, who the fuck? Is this bitch? Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna Google who she won against. Go on. And though. then it was, and then I listened to like one of her songs, and I was like, oh, you know what? I get this. I'm not like I'm not a Casey Musgraves fan yet. Well, she's she's crunch. She's I crunchy. Tend, tend to, yeah, <laughs> she's real country. Crunchy. Well, she's she's like country pop. Like her music, it straddles country in a really unique way mm-hmm. that um, it makes you you're like you like you're aware that you're listening to country music, but you're not. If you don't listen to country music on the regular, you don't feel like, oh, God, I have to listen to country. Yeah. Ugh. She won in 2019. Yeah. Hang on. I'm just... Here we go. Oh, so close. Oh, I'm going to find it. Ooh. Mm-hmm. Ooh. Mm-hmm. Here we go. Scroll. Let's see. Album of the year, 2019. Obviously, the winner was uh, Casey Musgraves for yes. Golden Hour. Yes. She was up against... Wow. Um... Oh my god, I didn't know that. Just like she, say it. No, she was up against beer bongs and Bentleys. Oh, thank God. From Post Malone. Thank God in that case. Then. She was up against Black Panther the album. Oh, um, like by Kendrick Lamar. Yeah, yeah. Okay. She was up against. By the way, I forgive you by someone named Brandy Carlisle. Okay, I've heard the name. Whose name before. I don't recognize. I've heard the name before. Up against Dirty Computer. 
Yep. Janelle Monae. So good. Up against the self-titled Her album. What? That was nominated for a Grammy? For album of the year. Good. Yeah. It deserves it. Yeah. Up against... It sh- oh, up man, against, it should not have beaten her. Up against Invasion of Privacy. Oh, should not have beaten Invasion of Privacy. And then Scorpion by Drake. It can beat Scorpion. Yeah, Scorpion That's is acceptable. Scorpion is half a okay album. <laughs> like, I need Drake to stop with the long album. Stop thinking you can do long albums, Dude, buddy. no one can do long albums. My favorite... Do like are, 11, al- do 11 tracks tops. Do you think I'd be I'm excited? I'm begging you. Do you think I'd be excited if Kendrick Lamar announced a 22-track album? No, I'd be like, oh, Kenny... Don't, don't don't call him Kenny. That's so Kung Fu Kenny, he's dude. A, he's a Pulitzer. Um, but yeah, uh, you're right. It would take a lot for me to really like settle down. What's the? How long is Mama's Gun by? Um, Mama's Gun by Erica Badu. It's like not even that long of an album. It's oh, got I'll like it it's up. got like 14 tracks on it or something like that. And I was like. <sighs> Ooh, and then I listened lot. to the whole thing, and I was like, "No, this is this is fantastic. I this think... is this has some of the best vocal performances on it um, that I've ever heard from a single human organism." Yeah, in my you br- you really lifetime. you brought me around to Erica Badu. I didn't really know about her. Yeah, I didn't really know about her either. And then like Bag Lady showed up on one of my like Spotify like Why is daily she, mixes. She's only popping up as a playlist. And... How, do, how do you spell her name? Oh, um, E R Y K A H. Oh, that's why. That's yeah. <laughs> I, I typed in E R I, and it was all just like Erica Badu playlist, and I was like, okay, I understand I'm not yeah. spelling it correctly, yeah. but why is her name still not popping up? I'm yeah, yeah, very yeah. clearly trying to search for Erica Badu here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's your name? Album was called Mama's, Mama's Gun. Mama's Gun. Uh, it's about an hour and forty minutes mm-hmm. long, but I don't remember how many tracks are on it specifically. But yeah, no. Um, if you guys like, there's fourteen in an interlude, so thirteen. Yes. Um, 14 in an interlude is like kind of long for my intention span these days. I think the perfect album length is 12 tracks. It's so worth it. Mama's Gun has, if you, if you are interested in like singing, like, like vocal vocalists, um, Erica Badu is one of the most beautiful vocalists to ever exist. And like at some points on that album, you think that you're listening to Billie Holiday. And then some points on that album, you think you're listening to like. Lauren Hill, and then some wow. points on that album, you think you're listening to fucking like Nita Simone, just like like the best female MC to ever exist, like female. D- does rapper. she rap too? Erica Badu bit also raps. Yeah, wow. yeah, she's she's a little problematic um, because I've heard that she doesn't always believe women when they come forward with sexual assault allegations, and like um, she said some shit about like fast girls and their short skirts, like asking to get into trouble what happened to shit. good girls bring back the good girl yeah that bullshit yeah um back when sh- women were classy ooh, i love me some tyrone though god damn i mean like i'll be honest with you man like, like i don't even know i'll open up this can of worms but like depending on like okay that is something that sucks about erica badu yeah. right it's obviously not great but she's also not really in a position of power that would give her leverage over someone like she she'd never be in charge of a situation like that like she isn't for all intents and purposes just a singer you mean like she's not like a record executive or like a or like a studio head well yeah like she's just one just one singer right and maybe that's ignorant of me like but it is a little ignorant um we don't want to hear that shit from anybody, period. I it's hear just, you. It's just of what course. I'm whatever. But, I, don't, but, I don't want to get into it. I don't want to get into fucking uh, whatever. We did mission statement last time, so I don't want to fucking do this again. Yeah. But like. My point was that you can like her music. Yeah, like, exactly. It's fine. Exactly. So here we are. I'm yeah. just being, I'm just being honest because like <laughs> in this day and age, it is my pet peeve when like I say that I like something and then somebody kind of like shoves their phone in my face and they're like, they did this yeah, just did, so you know. Did you know 14 years ago she killed a dog? Nine times out of ten, I I do know. Yeah, I do, and I and I just I need you to relax. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's like it's I'm not like, saying I don't care, but like get your if you don't get your fucking phone out of my face, I'm gonna form decisions. Yeah. You know, and don't don't succumb to rage culture. I'm just also like, like, when has anybody ever known me to perpetuate like some of the sh- like I'm not I, I I don't like fucking I don't I don't call little girls fast. So maybe if you like hear me about listening to Erica Badu, like, know that I'm not going to just, like, turn around and be yeah, like, yeah. oh, yeah, girls need to stop wearing short skirts if they don't want to get pregnant. It's like, yeah, I mean, I, no, I'm not I'm not going to start peddling that shit just because I listened to Mama's Gun once. Yeah, like, uh, yeah, exactly. Calm the fuck down. <laughs> calm the fuck down. Not going to all of a sudden one of these days be like, I'm saying it's those spaghetti straps. Like, I see it. And it's like, what the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> no, no, I'm not. No. So go away. I think you've colored your character plenty enough, Sam. I hope so. Yeah. 
I just, this is why I need, this is why fame is appealing, right? Because everybody just wants to have the space to explain themselves to the world and then just have everybody get it, you know? Right. You don't have to explain yourself to everybody over and over That's again. That's why we're doing famous. this podcast. So you can be like, so at some point in my life when someone's like, hey, Karen, what's your what's your opinions on this? I'm like, well, if you listen, listen to, to episode fucking podcast. 52 of the Chill Spot Podcast, maybe you'll find <laughs> out. Maybe you'll find out. Yeah. Just never tell anybody anything about me ever again. No. Just tell them to refer to my podcast. Please do not refer to me. Just listen to my content. Exactly. <laughs> Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Do you do the thing where uh, you get high and you fantasize about being a famous person explaining your views, your views uh, on like a talk show? I don't get that's a that's a regular occurring daydream. For really? Me. Just yeah. like you don't even need like nothing influence. Just like yeah, you know how your brain brings up like cringy, embarrassing moments from your life to yeah. make you relive it and like physically hurt you from the inside out. Of course. So like every day, my my brain, how I like cool myself down after my brain does that to me is I like envision myself on like the Ellen show, like explaining myself, um, explaining the, the yeah. cringy situation that my brain just brought up. And then everybody forgives me for being a weird person <laughs> because like, I, because I went on Ellen and explained myself. that you have all of the intimate knowledge of, and the other people involved literally have not thought about it in yeah. 20 years. Yeah. Yeah. No, <laughs> nobody cares. I'm trying to think maybe if I air it out, Share it'll, some cringe. It'll like, it'll like go away. Um, I of course, cringy, now I can't cringy moments. think of anything. I was just like a general weirdo growing up. Oh my god. At least I perceived myself to be. Yeah. You know, so like whenever I did something, I was always like, "Fuck, that's it. Like oh, we're done here. Like <laughs> social life over." <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um. Back when um, I was working, I quit my job, by the way. I don't work at a grocery store anymore. Um, back when I was working... Do you want to say the name of the grocery store now so we can just bag on it? No. All right. Give it some time. You hear that, Longos? <laughs> it wasn't Longos. We're coming for you. It wasn't Longos. Your um, next Metro. If you if you keep listing off names, they're going to do process of elimination and figure it out. Yeah. But um, Coming for you, Walgreens. There's, there's no Walgreens in Canada. Like, shut up and let me finish. So uh, I was doing pre-calls. Uh, pre-calling is when you like call people before they come and pick up their online order and um, just like confirm substance shorts with them and make sure that everything's okay so that they don't have to do anything. They just have to have the groceries put in their car and then leave. Um, so I was on the phone with this lady and it was like a Zoom call. Like we just couldn't not start talking at the same time. Uh, is that... And then like you just gonna, like, and then no, I always start. No, you no, go no, you first. Go, you, please. No, it's, no, no, I, 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 I'm serious. Okay, okay, I'll okay, go you, first. You go, you go. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go. Yeah, go. Okay, and then it's so what I was saying. <laughs> <laughs> it's like our podcast, and we just couldn't start talking. And at one point, I just like sat. And like let the air go dead over yep. the phone. No, yeah, you just you just stop talking, and then yeah. five seconds go by. Yeah, and then they start talking, and you're yeah. okay, good. And Here then go. I, I think I actually like hung up the phone and like put my forehead down on the counter for twenty <laughs> seconds, and just like, and just went like, <sighs> oh, yeah. to myself. I do that a lot. I do this thing. I was saying to my um my uh, ASM at work. I work at a video game retail store. I'm pretty mm-hmm. sure I've mentioned it by name in the podcast before, but you know what? Um. Yeah, like I don't dislike my job, so I'm a little. Yeah. I, I'm. I don't. You're I'm, different. I don't necessarily need to hide the fact. I'm not gonna do it for what. Whatever. I'm getting off track. So I was at work, and a lot of the phone calls I do at work are super just rehearsed, right? Like if I'm doing a pre-order call, you have a script. I say, well, I mean, I've, I've made my own yeah. over the years of working there. Yeah, you made your own script, and more or less, people stick to it. Yeah, right. And like that's just that's just what everybody does. It yeah. just makes things easier. Yeah. Um, Especially if you have phone call anxiety, it just helps to know what you're yeah. going to say. I have completely gotten over that, by the way. I yeah. used to have a lot of phone call anxiety, and now it's like whatever. Yeah. Um, but I do this thing where if my brain's on autopilot and I'm looking at something and I'm not like super paying attention, I'll just mold the words I'm looking at into my mouth mm-hmm. like there was one time where it was like yeah like hey this is Cameron from Colin let you know about the 20% off pop figure 
your your X Men figure is in. Like, like cause I was reading the sales sign oh, okay. as I was talking. Right. Oh, okay. Or I'll be like, hey, hey this is Call of Duty Modern. This is camera from EVK. <laughs> you know, like, like this is Call of Duty calling yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. I've done that. I've done. I'm serious. Like, I go on. Press such... F to pick up your pre order. Yeah. <laughs> Your sick reference, by the way. Thank you. Wow. Yeah. Look at you, my girlfriend's such a gamer. Oh my god, I like I like no video games. You're like a fucking real gamer girl. Oh man. I, oh my god so we started tent and it's great and everybody's great and i love it so much yeah. Tent is a theater and a theater entrepreneurs network and teaching i forgot what it stands for toronto fringe sets it up to like teach emerging artists um it was essential theater skills mm-hmm. like making a budget and um like marketing and 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 generally just taking care of yourself and how to not mm-hmm. work with assholes and assert yourself stands in, for in the industry the exit no touch yeah <laughs> um <laughs> And everybody's, it's been going really great. I'm having a fantastic time. And everybody else in the group that I'm learning with are fantastic people. Seemed very nice. The two sessions I eavesdrops on seemed really good. Really good. <laughs> yeah. And um, so we were, we were like on a break one time. And because of COVID, uh, everything is happening over Zoom. So I basically am on a Zoom call for eight hours a day. Mm, thanks, Corona. Which everybody is, has been very nice about acknowledging um, is the worst. But we're making the best of it, and everybody's being very nice. Uh-huh. Um, well, what are you gonna do? Be a bump on a log? Exactly. But we were we were coming back from a break, and like some people were like in and like had their cameras on, and some people were still. We were just waiting for them to come back. So like it felt weird to be like sitting at my desk, like not looking at anything, mm-hmm. and like people could see me and I could see them, but we weren't in the same room, and they it was like a presence. But, like, I had to acknowledge the presence because, like, they were there, but they weren't. It was weird. Um, so I was just like, so, has anybody um, played the new Animal Crossing update yet? And nobody said yes. And I, and it's like a group of, like, 20 people. I'm like, none of you have a Switch? None yeah. of you. None of you? It's, you know I feel like I'm back at school I making James Brown references and like nobody else fucking watches TV fucking or say. listens to non-musicals. Sam, Sam, you're in a theater circle. <laughs> it's theater or nothing, baby. You <laughs> talk guess. about theater or you fuck off. I guess. Like, I guess. That is one of the craziest things that I, because like, I, I met you early on in UW where, yeah. where we went to school and met. Yeah. And you were so culturally in tuned in terms of like pop culture and like we both liked a lot of rap. Yeah. And I knew about theater but also movies tv and music yeah and then so did i like and yeah. like i i knew a lot about video games and video games and tv yeah. and music were my bag so like when we met up we had a lot to talk about yeah so i just figured like well if i'm this interested in media and theater is a kind of media it, it's, yeah it it's is a, one of the medias it's just my preferred like at the time like my genuine preferred medium of interest yeah. right i figured like oh i'm sure there's tons of people in here who are all in, into all sorts of shit no 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 most people went to school with, and like, listen, if you're listening to this podcast, let, let me know that I say this like, like very endearingly. Yeah. But talking to y'all about y'all anything, watch TV more. Damn. Talking about y'all about anything but theater was like pulling teeth. Yeah. You're like nothing. None of y'all like, and, I, and I'm not. I'm not. I'm being very general. I'm not calling anyone out in particular. But it was like legitimately like, hey, so like, uh, like you know, do you listen to this album? Like, no. You watch this? Like, no. Like you, you, you made a. I made a low hanging fruit James Brown reference. Yeah. Like that is like everybody should know. They're like, hey! and got crickets. Yeah. Fucking crickets. Yeah. And it's like Jesus Christ. Remember, am, am, am I insane? Remember when we were in that 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 writing class and our our forty something year old Australian white mm-hmm. salt and pepper haired professor mm-hmm. called Toronto the six. And nobody else but you and me knew what he was talking about. I don't know. I, I, Sam, listen, I, like, I'm, I'm excuse not trying to be rude. Me? I'm not trying to be rude. I have no idea how that's possible. I, I don't know. D- it's literally, do you not have Twitter? It's, like, it's like I don't all understand. of their marketing now. You don't even have to listen to Drake to know that Toronto is the six. Yeah. Like, like, excuse me? Like, do you, have you turned on TSN by accident once? <laughs> and they're showing off Raptors highlights? <laughs> Like, legit. Like, how, yeah. d- how do you... You live 40... You, it's not like we live in fucking Edmonton. Yeah, we are, like, on a good day, we are an hour and a half outside of Toronto. If the 401 yeah. is behaving. Honestly. Like, how do you not know? We all go to Toronto all the time for theater stuff, but, like, you know, like anybody who lives out of town, like, has to make a day of it. So you spend the day in Toronto mm-hmm. around, like... And, like, we're all, like, we're all where the theaters are. So they're all, like, really hip, like, 
up-to-date areas like the distillery district and like downtown and fucking like in and around um, like Young and Dundas Square and stuff like that. Like, how are you not seeing six merchandise everywhere? Everywhere. How? How, how, how? How did you miss the six? Or very, at the very least, how do you not know colloquially that this is a nickname for Toronto? I don't know, man. It's an international city. I don't know. I just don't, I just, and listen. I I know, I know I've said in the past, like, you know, People don't know everything that you know. But to me, in my eyes, the six is so heavy handed. Well, there's also there's also like six stuff is so heavy handed. There's a big difference between hearing like not knowing that like this many people called it the six and literally having never heard yeah. the, 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 the the like the name the six for Toronto. It's a big difference between being like, oh, I've heard people call it that, but I didn't realize it was so popular. And like, mm-hmm. what's that? Yeah. How the fuck do you not know what that but is? Like everybody was like, I've never heard that before in my life. And I don't I was know, like, bro, dip your toes in different pools. I, yeah. There's lots of different yeah. shit to explore. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. You don't gotta be a Drake fan. You also don't gotta be a fucking square either. <laughs> Jesus. I'm sorry, everyone I went to school with. I, I really do like all of you. Yeah, no. Most um, of you. It's crazy. No, all of you. I'm just kidding. Listen, not everybody, not, maybe not everybody likes us back. You know? You're right. You're right. Maybe there's maybe who, who who says that we were so fucking great. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Who the fuck are we? we? I mean, all of our friends went on to have careers in theaters, and we're doing a fucking podcast. No, 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 so they didn't. What jokes are you on us. About? So many people we went to school with like don't work in theater or or entertainment at yeah, all. Yeah. It was a bit. Which is, um, which is funny. <laughs> yeah. Seriously. I mean, half the people we went to school with just went on to work like super normal jobs. Yeah. But then like, I mean, nothing wrong with that. I mean, it was something perfectly clear. No, they. Seem happy it's if anything great. i'm and a like little that envious happens, you know <laughs> if my creative drive died after i graduated i could just work a normal fucking job and make 40k a year god what a life that would be yeah <laughs> it's like yeah we're sticking with what we went to school with but we also both still live with our parents yeah so recording in my parents basement exactly which is now a studio yeah yeah we're at first episode in our new stew if you follow us on social media is it which the you can we recorded in the studio that's right that's cool it is i mean it's 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 incomplete and falling apart but we're working on it. It's ours. It is a work in progress. Just like everything, we'll figure it out. I mean, we mentioned this on our Mario No Touch episode, which you can watch uh, tomorrow, mm-hmm. <laughs> I guess, because it wouldn't be out when yeah. this comes out. Um, but yeah, it's just, we don't know what's going on with some of these squares. These little, I bought a bunch of like 12 inch foam soundproof, soundproof panels. Squares, yeah. And I've placed them around the room. Again, you can follow us on social media, you can see that you can see. Um, but it's just been like I'm gonna lose all my hair. Like I came into this room today, and th- like I came gesturing to no one at home, there was like, f- like seriously, like twenty panels on the floor. Like it was, they were in a pile. They had yeah. fallen off so many in, yeah. in such volume. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, oh great, I'm gonna have an aneurysm. Yeah, and it's definitely frustrating. Don't get me wrong. Um, there might be a panel falling off. Um, right now, don't look. Don't look. Don't look. Is there a panel falling off? There is. Don't look at it. Just leave it alone. Don't worry about it. I'm trying not to, but I you're making a really happen. big deal about it. I saw it happen while you were talking about the panels falling off. Mm-hmm. And I was like, mm-hmm. the like Kill Bill music came yeah. on in my head. Mm-hmm. But like, I think back to like before we recorded anything and we were just trying to set up the blanket fort at all. To have anything, to have anything, and we were going out, and we were we we're going to Michael's like every other day to get new command hooks because nothing was staying up, and we were fucking ripping the paint off of the walls, even though we promised your parents that we wouldn't, and we just didn't know what we were doing, but we figured it out, and we had a setup, right, and we got going. So as long as we have that base, I don't see why we can't do literally anything else, babe. You know. You're right. You know? As always, Sam, you are right. We did it once, we'll do it again. So, mm-hmm. you know, the panels will stick to the ceiling at one point. They will. I mean, They'll be up there. I will actually fucking hot glue you these panels to the ceiling. Okay. Hot glue, yes. Nailing, no. Because there's a vent there, and we can't nail well, it to the I'm vent. I'm also not... Yeah, I wasn't being serious about nailing the things to the ceiling. But they will be up. God, the ceiling looks so ugly. I'm just looking at all the duct tape that we tried. And it's just, it looks like shit. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna, remind I'm gonna, me. I'm gonna take it all down before I leave because if it's not gonna if it's not gonna stick to the ceiling, it's not gonna work. Then you know what? I'm also not gonna look at it I'm also because probably, it looks like there's bugs on the ceiling and you know, I hate it. Last logistical thing we say before we move on. I was probably gonna redo all of this. 
Yeah. I might even look at it to see if it's needed. Yeah. We might not even might not need it. I'm not gonna do it. Yeah. Because because frankly, I'm done. Yeah. <laughs> like I've had enough. But um, we will we will have our day of success, and yes. we will look back at this time and we'll laugh. Fifty one podcasts in. It's funny, right? Because fifty one seems like a big number. Yeah. But in this large scale of things, we've only been doing this about a year or so. Mm-hmm. Um. I guess like I'm not I'm not kind to myself ever. No. Pretty much. You really haven't been. Um and I always compare myself to like I'll, I'll go to like episode 52 of like my favorite podcasts, mm-hmm. like long running duo heavy like yeah, guests, like 10 year, you know, 7 it, year. You know, and I, I'll go back to episode 52 of their podcast yeah. and being like I remember when this came out. Yeah. And like how much I enjoyed it, like episode Hello. 52. And here we are at episode 52 and we're still so much like guess in the groundwork of things. Yeah. But I'd much rather be here and continue to grow than, like, just, I don't know. I feel like if we had massive success at the beginning, like, somehow, <laughs> if if the internet was all of a sudden really interested in two nobodies from Canada playing video games you've seen played before, <laughs> like, if we just blew up, I feel like that wouldn't have actually played in our favor. I almost feel like that would have worked against us. I mean, I would like it because it would have given me an excuse to quit my job way sooner and still be making money. Right. But, yeah. But we, I don't think we would have grown quite like we've grown. Yeah. You know? Yeah, we'd still be making awful jokes. <laughs> I don't think we made awful jokes no, in the I beginning. No, I don't think so. We, actually, actually, I went back and listened to, like, some of our pre-new mic, our new, like, this episodes before we got our new microphones, yeah, and, like, started feeling like we could make better, yeah. feeling like we can make better content. And um, I still liked it. I still had a good time. Of course. I'm very nostalgic for those episodes. I mean, I, I frequently... I'll go I, even back. Think I, well, I even think we sounded a little bit smart every once in a while. So. Yeah, every, every now and then yeah, we make us. a pretty good point, I think. Yeah. Or at least my mom thinks so. <laughs> <laughs> my mom does not listen to our podcast anymore. No. No, she gave up after like episode four. <laughs> well, she's not a podcast person. No, not at all. I yeah. wanted your mom, though. Your mom listens to all of our content. Everything. Like, every video, I think, right? Yeah, like, yeah. Wow. There was a time where, like, I would come downstairs after I woke up and just hear my own voice. And, like, I didn't want to tell her to stop listening, to, to be honest. Like, we can use the views. Like, hey, I'll take whatever view I can get. Use your retention, baby. But I was like, damn, like, she's really listening to, like, everything. And she would, like, talk to me about stuff. And I'd be like, Mom, I don't remember what I said. Oh, yeah. She'd be like, yeah, I know that part. Where, what did you say about this? And I was like, I don't. You think I fucking remember? I don't know. Sam, how many times after we finish a podcast, we go, what should we call it? And then think, like, what do we talk about? What did we just talk about? And then nothing. We have nothing to. That's why half of our podcast episodes have nothing to do with the fucking topics. (laughs) There are some that are just like, well, just name it this. Yeah. Or, 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 I think I mentioned Taraji P. Henson at some point. Exactly, yeah. Yeah. Talked about acrimony, alimony, acrimony. Acrimony. <laughs> acrimony. The Invisible Man. I He's don't got another movie out where, like, the, um, the, the, I don't know, like, there's a, there's like a woman and she's in prison and she's talking to her lawyer and, like, throughout the scene, her, like, wig, like, migrates to different parts of her face. Okay. It's like a bad family guy bit. And I'm like, how on God's green earth? Did you allow this? What, Tyler Perry? Yeah. Like, how how lazy do you have to be to let your hair and makeup person, like, put the wig in a totally different position and be like, this is fine. Let's just yeah. keep rolling. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, I don't understand. Oh, I don't know, man. Well, Tyler Perry. <laughs> I don't know, man. Tyler Perry's famous filmmaking style of set up a camera and then hit let record. Rip. And just, like, let's yep. just... Let dialogue flow. Oh, but Cammy has such excellent work ethic. He wrote six scripts in a year. That's not a good thing. That's not, that's nothing to be by proud himself. of. By himself. By himself. That's nothing to be proud of. No. I could write six scripts in a year too. They're just not going to be good. Yeah. But that's why so many writers take so long to write because, well, first of all, none of them have confidence. And second of all, yeah. you're going to take it to someone and it's going to get workshopped and you go back to the drawing board and apply new notes because that's what you fucking should do. Yeah. Tyler like, Perry wrote a bunch of first drafts in you know, a year. He's like, fuck it. This is, we can make this for a million dollars and make back like thirty. <sighs> Fucking Tyler Perry. We all, I'm. We will never work for Tyler Perry now. No, no, no. No, no. no. He's gonna be like, yeah, I heard your episode talking about acrimony. Yeah. That's my piece de la resistance, dude. That's my piece de la resistance. Yeah, man. Yeah. Um. I'm. I mean, yeah. Thank you for all that you do for black creatives, but like, sure. You gotta hire 
black fucking writers, man. <laughs> or, or like, I don't know, show someone a script before you fucking you gotta, put it to film. You, you got to get over your shit with the WGA, man. They really are right. Like, they I mean, really do know what they're doing over there. They only help out, like, I don't know, every other writer in Hollywood. Yeah. So, like... And there's nothing like what you're making right now. At least, you know, like, not on the big screen. I guess in a way that's not... <laughs> There really is no other movie like a Tyler Perry movie. There really isn't. You know? He really does have that brand. Down pat. Good for him. Locked down. You know, I, I want Tyler Perry's money. That's yeah. what I would like. Yeah. Tyler Perry's money. Yeah. Um, crazy how much money those bad movies make. Oh, dude. That man has the biggest film studio in existence. Yeah. In possibly ex- the world. It's bigger than all of Kitchener Waterloo. That's not very big. It's like, I mean, it's a, but it's still it's two cities. It's sprawling, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, 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 yeah. You know? Yeah, no, it's massive. It's like half the GTA. Oh, my God. Fuck, it's like, what the fuck? Why is it, it so big? It is its own... They, people, call, people call it a compound. Legit. It's crazy. Oh, yeah. I wonder if there's, like, corners of that he just doesn't use, though. Like, it is a massive amount of space. Um, I think the space that he doesn't use for movies, he's using for, like, housing. Because oh, all of the all of the all of the buildings on the lot are up to code. So he's using it to, like, uh, so house, can... like, homeless black people in well, Atlanta. Because he was homeless at one point, too. He actually, like, the... Yeah, the, no, yeah, I remember that. Yeah, the highway exit that the studio leads off, is off of is, like, the highway exit he used to sleep on when he wow. was poor. I feel bad about making fun about Tyler Perry now. <laughs> well, well, no, because... Because like, his movies are still bad. <laughs> exactly, exactly, exactly. Just goes to show you, that just because they're poor doesn't mean they're fucking holier than thou. I mean, J.K. Rowling was poor as shit, and he, she, she's she hates trans people, so... She's garbage. Fuck it. And just, like, doubles down on it? Yeah, she made another comment today. Just, I didn't know, because, uh, like, honestly, like, I unfollowed J.K. Rowling, and I just, like, I think I muted her, too. I, like, blocked her or something like that. I did something just to make sure that I never fucking see her shit again. Because I know that she's a TERF. And I trust that she's still a TERF. Mm -hmm. And I believe it when people say that she's still tweeting TERFy things, because she's a TERF. Well, I don't... So that's what TERFs do. I'm not going to look it up, because I don't want to give her the... are going to keep talking about it. I don't want to give her the space or anything. But, yeah, she made some other comment about, like, like, yeah, keep telling me to shut up. Like, I won't. Or something. And it's like, good for right. you, sis. Well, did, did you hear about that? I think Stephen King tweeted something out that like she took as support for her. Ah. And then she like quote tweeted it mm. and was like, "Thank you, Stephen. Like doing the right thing." Like, mm. and then someone asked Stephen his uh, his opinion on trans people, and he was like, "Trans people are people. Fuck turfs." And then she deleted the quote tweet. Yes. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> Fuck you, Joanne. Oh, Joanne. Oh, you turfy bitch. What the fuck is wrong with you? Adam Tots has a really good comic about, like, J.K. Rowling, like, tweeting stuff about, or revealing things about Harry Potter, like, way too late in the game. And it's, like, oh, a yeah. bunch of cops, like, around the corner, and they're like, just come out, J.K. Rowling, we just want you to stop, like... You're not in any trouble. And she's like hiding behind a corner, like sweating. And she's like, <sighs> Dumbledore had two penises. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I still, I mean, I, I understand how we talk about this ad nauseum whenever we brought up, bring up Harry Potter. But the fact that wizards used to shit on the floor is like, and that's canon. And they've never redacted that. It's like magic did away. Yep. Oh, first of all, I hate this place. You know what's crazy about that, Sam? I want to I want to lay uh, lay out a map for you, right? So Joanne, in her infinite wisdom, mm-hmm. goes to her editors. She most likely still has editors and like mm-hmm. the people who run the Pottermore account, right? Mm-hmm. And she would she would say this. She would be like, you know, before there was plumbing in Hogwarts, they used to shit on the floor, and then they would use poopas deletus. And it would it would be transformed to the poop dimension where the goblins who hate who I hate live or something, right? I don't know. So the anti-Semitic goblins live. So let's not get off the- track. But that information had to have gone through like five or six people for yeah. sure yeah. before the person who tweeted it, who runs the Pottermore account, typed the characters into their phone <laughs> and hit enter. So no one along this track was like, hey, JK, Rowling, um, not Simmons, um, this is a horrible idea. Yeah. And this is not, like, this is, you don't want this. Trust me when I say you don't. No, 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 no. Like, for, like, for real. Like, they would they would just, like. Listen. Because they, they, they wear such big robes, right? So they just kind of squat down and it's, it's all very private. It's very good. And the person's like, no, privacy is not that, the concern. That's, I don't understand. That's not what, <laughs> that's not what I'm talking it's about. It's not the privacy. Joanne. It's not the public urination that I'm worried about. It's the no. presence of 
fecal matter yeah. in a public space. She's like, listen, they loved it. Long. When I said Dumbledore was gay, they loved it. They're going to love when wizards shit on the floor. Oh, that my is God. not the same. Oh, my God. Um, <laughs> sorry. Um, I'm going to go home and write a sketch about this. <laughs> but, like, <laughs> no, um, that's not what they want. They want right. to hear, like, Newt Scamander and Bethilda Bagshot were best friends, mm-hmm. and they used to like hold hands and wait, skip wait. around. And can catch- you do do a tweet chain? Could you add that D- Dobby has a deformed penis? No, but like, <laughs> stop it! <laughs> Hear me out. Dobby's penis looks just like his nose. Yeah, can you write? Can you can you can you write that in, please? <laughs> no. Oh. Wait a second. Oh, hang on. I don't I'm- want any of this. Okay, fine. I'll tweet the wizard's shit on the floor. Just stop. <laughs> Holy fuck! Jesus Christ, Joanne! I, I love the thought that she exhausted her editor so much that wizard shit on the floor and magic it away actually was the yeah, best. Was thing. the best thing. <laughs> Ooh, oh Nelly. my god! Out of all the things, she's like, okay, we can we can I say. Just, I guess the fucking poop. Take the take the poop one. We, well, no, okay. I know they're gonna hate it. Yes. I hate it. You don't think I hate this, Jerry? I, of course I hate it, Jerry. <laughs> Jesus Christ, Jerry! We all hate Jerry. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So she either wants us to add that wizard shit on the floor and magic it away, or that creature and Dobby had an intense sexual relationship <laughs> that wasn't pictured in the books. <laughs> Well, I mean... Creature is actually Dobby's father, but Creature molested him as a child, and that's why Dobby doesn't want to be a house elf at all and completely disenfranchises himself from the house elf occupation as a whole because Cre- because his because his incest-ridden father ruined his life. And that's why... And it's just like, oh my God, Joanne. JK, please stop. Just please. write more Harry... Po- oh, we don't want this bullshit. Don't write more Harry Potter. Not don't, anymore. Don't. Not anymore. I, I will anymore. say, though, in terms of Harry Potter media, I am very excited for... That Harry Potter RPG that's supposed to be coming out next year, being developed by Avalanche. Yeah. It's supposed to be good. Yeah. That leaked footage was really cool. Yeah. And J.K. Rowling has nothing to fucking do with him. <laughs> I mean, like, she... Okay, so... Well, thing, she's going to get royalties. I was going to say, the thing that people don't understand is that J.K. Rowling owns the Harry Potter trademark. Of course. Like... You can't support Harry Potter without supporting J.K. Rowling. She is making money off of, like, all of the Fantastic Beasts spinoff, mm-hmm. all of Cursed Child. All the merchandise. All of the, all of the theme parks, all of the merchandise within the theme parks. Anything, If it has the Harry Potter trademark on it, Joanne Rowling is getting royalties from it. You're right. You are right about respect. that. Respect. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's what people... I think. I feel like that's what people don't really, like, realize. And, like, people keep... Harry Potter fans keep, like... Posting their oh, I saw some mental gymnastics in r slash Harry Potter the other day. They're fucking oh, like they're fucking merch, and they're like, well, what am I sp- like? What am I supposed to do with this? And it's like, just don't be a fucking turf. Like, I mean, listen, man, like you I, already own the stuff, so you, you can't. What do you? Yeah, it's like it's like these racists who go out and be like Nike will be like Black Lives Matter, like, I, or they'll be like I bought this and be like, oh, but I don't support J.K. Rowling, and it's like, well. You're maintaining her wealth because if it has a Harry Potter trademark on it, like she's getting royalties from but it. Not for anything. And again, not to like, not to, I hate the word devil's advocate because mm-hmm. I, because I don't think it's worth it. No one who's played devil's advocate has added anything to a no, conversation. No, they're just trying to frustrate you into oblivion. At all. So I'm not trying to be a devil's advocate when I say this, but Joanne is already a fucking billionaire. Mm-hmm. I can't take away her money. Mm-hmm. Yes, I can control me giving her more money. Yeah, at the, with the knowledge that we have right now, yeah. we can control giving her more money. But that being said, the money that I've spent, the money that, that is mine, that yeah. is in her pockets, already. I can't do anything about that. Yeah. I can't go and get my money back. I can bring my receipts to J.K. Rowling yeah. and be like, oh, I bought a Harry Potter box set to impress my girlfriend, but now I hate you. Can I have yeah. it back, please? Yeah. You know? Yeah, exactly. So you may as well enjoy your fucking replica wands that you have right now. Yeah, I mean, I and just like... Enjoy, like, what I what I always say, and, like, the one, like, really, really actually solid good lesson that my dad taught me when I was a kid. One of them. Is that, um, like, you can have your heroes, and that's fine, but they're, your heroes are human beings, and they're fallible, and... Most um, famous people are bad people. <laughs> just, 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 just acknowledge, acknowledge the bad that they did do, don't ignore it, um... And then when it comes to how it affects your behavior and how you move through the world, like just just embody all the good things, you know. Um, Muhammad Ali is one of my biggest role, like biggest uh, uh, influences for sure in a lot of ways. Um, but he's a very he, influential man. He was a womanizer, and he was not faithful to his wife, mm-hmm. and treated her very badly. 
So um, I simply don't do that. <laughs> well, yeah, not for anything. I read Muhammad Ali quotes, and I think like, wow, this is really applicable to to real life. You know, like it's it's really cool to be like that confident and um, sure of yourself, and never let anybody bully you into yeah. um, straying from your path. And I'm gonna do that when I talk about how much I love Muhammad well, Ali. I'm not gonna do the rest. You and I preach up and down. We're the fucking preachiest preachers in the preach pool. Up and down, left and right, about how... I'm going to call churches preach pools from now on. <laughs> that's, a, that's a good one. But um, me and you preach constantly that you need to you need to carefully consume media. Yeah. Right? And I'm not going to sit here and re-explain what all that means, especially if you're on yeah. episode 50. Like, this is 51 of our podcast. If you've listened to all 50 episodes, and I guess, yeah. you know what I'm talking about real quick. Like, you, you just need to understand that a lot of things about celebrities can be true at once. Yeah. You can understand that... You know, uh, Dave Chappelle talks about this in a stand-up of his most recently, mm-hmm. a couple of years ago now, when, when he first was doing his big comeback, mm-hmm. where it's like, Bill Cosby is an awful person mm-hmm. and raped lots of women. Mm-hmm. Bill Cosby also paid for the sound system to let Martin Luther King speak at his rallies. Mm-hmm. Like, both of these things Did are he? true. Something like that. Uh, I two, mean, two, two, two. No. <laughs> go ahead and go and fact check that. Timeline wise, that doesn't make any sense. It was in the '60s, right? But like Bill Cosby wasn't Bill Cosby in the '60s. He didn't have the money to like pay. Wasn't for he? A I, when was the Cosby? I thought the Cosby Show was on in the '60s. Babe, that was like the '80s, the '80s into the '90s. I don't know, man. Okay, but um, this is I'm regurgitating something I heard on a stand-up comedian's routine, uh-huh, right? Uh-huh. Like. Uh-huh. Um, he paid for some kind of big, important sound system mm-hmm. for a bi- uh, some kind of racial leaders rally. Okay. Okay. Like this information is out there. Like okay. go. I'm I'm just talking to my girlfriend on a podcast. Mm-hmm. I'm talking about careful consumption. Don't listen to me either. I'm not the fucking. I'm not Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. Don't listen to me. And I guess this is what I was getting at earlier when I was talking about how like I like Erica Badu and then like. You know, like, I'm afraid that if I say that I like Erica Badu, someone's going to, like, do the research on her and be like, Erica Badu said this! And, like, shove their fucking phone in my face. It's like, understand that when I say that I like somebody and that person has done, like, problematic things, and, like, I don't support truly heinous celebrities. You're never going to see me going, oh, but look at the good side of Harvey Weinstein. Yeah, never no. going to fucking say that. I'm never going to fucking say that. If you rape that. people or beat people, it's like, fuck you. Fuck off. But, like, when it comes to, like, celebrities who have just said shit that people don't particularly like um like things like erica badu saying like oh like oh these fast girls in their short skirts and blah 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 um i'm just simply going to not be like that you know thank I, you for bringing it to yeah. my attention i know that it's bad now um so i'm well, not gonna do you knew it. it was bad before i think actually. that mama's gun and i said like i said this earlier like beautiful album some of the most gorgeous vocal performances on it and i love it for that please go listen to orange moon um if you know if you want to know what the fuck i'm talking about because Goddamn. Um, like, I can say that and just simply not embody any of the, you know, misogynoir, misogynistic shit that Erica Badu also says about women and their short skirts. Right. You know, like, two things can be true at the same time. And, you know, like, I will always keep an eye out for the truly heinous shit. You know, like, obviously, I've dialed back my love of Harry Potter a lot because J.K. Rowling ruined it with her turfiness. I know, and it's a shame. It sucks, but, like, it's the right thing it's to do. It's just the way it is. But, you know, like, if I find out that um, one of my favorite creators, I'm trying to think of something that's not, like, so heinous um, that it's, like, a human rights violation and is bad. Um, like someone who just has a shitty opinion. Oh, oh, okay. So let's say that I'm like a huge Leia Michelle fan. You know, like Leia Michelle. Um, I'm not a huge Leia Michelle fan, by the way. I thought that her um, getting in shit for treating people awful was hilarious, and I had a great time watching it all go down. I don't know who that is. She's the she's the star of Glee. Oh, whatever. She was engaged yeah. to Corey Monteith when he died and that's all that shame. stuff. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, that's a shame. But um, it was recently found out that she was a huge diva on set. Um, would often tell the extras to their faces that they weren't good enough to sit at the same lunch table as her, like a true mean girl. What to say? What are you, a fucking mean girl? Yeah, no, she was just she. It just like a bunch of like one one person who was on Glee for a short story arc came forward and said that um she would that that Leia Mich- Michelle said that she wished she could like shit in her wig. <laughs> Wait, Leia Michelle told someone that she, Leia would like to shit in someone's wig. Yeah. <laughs> 
And then like the rest of Hollywood came forward and was like, no, you're like, you're absolutely right. Leia Michelle is a fucking nightmare to work with. Wow. She's a huge diva and completely insufferable. You reap um, what you fucking sow. Yeah. Oh, I know what it is. She tweeted out a, a Black Lives Matter statement and then a black, like the actress was black who called her out and she was like, ha ha, you say that Black Lives Matter, but you said you wanted to shit in my fucking wig on the set of Glee and wouldn't let me sit with you and the other actors because you thought I was not worthy enough to sit with you. So fuck off with your Black Lives Matter bullshit. Wow. Um, and then a bunch of people came forward and talked about all of the diva shit that she would pull on sets. And um, another panel. I know, I know, I noticed. Um... So, like, that, like, let's say I'm a huge Leia Michelle fan. I can just simply not treat people like that. Yeah. And still enjoy Leia Michelle's work. Yeah, because she, I mean, you know? just because she's a she's bitch mean. doesn't mean she's a fucking world she, leader. She sounds like a truly mean, nasty person. But, like. People like Jared Leto. Hello. Like, come on. Hello. You can like Jared Leto's acting and just, like, not send dead rats to people. You know? You know? It's, you it's just, amazing. You can just simply not do the bad things that your favorite celebrity has done. You can just not do them. Yep. You can enjoy their work and just not do the terrible shit that they do. Yeah. You can love Jay-Z and not cheat on your wife. Of course. The two two things can exist at the same time, my friend. Well, that's just it. You know what you know kills me? Uh, you don't have to give me... Sh- you don't have to make me feel like a bad person for liking the person. Mm-hmm. And liking the person's work and what they do and like respecting it. Right. Um, if I'm not the kind of person who cheats on their wife or like treats castmates like shit. Listen, man, to add to your point, if you're bad shit, like if you're if you're sh- if your skeletons and your baggage isn't a human rights violation. Yeah. Then I'm a bit more inclined to be like, yeah, if you like that person, then whatever. Yeah. But if you're out here assaulting people or, and I'm not saying that Erica Badu or anyone, Jay-Z or anyone in that regard is like this, but like the people like, okay, not to get into this whole conversation right at the end here, but the people who have been canceled for doing really heinous shit have it coming. Yeah. The people who like things got like, like, I don't know. I, I think about Tiger Woods. Yeah. Tiger Woods, she knows his wife, like 700 fucking women, yeah. and is still playing golf. a top 10 golfer. Yeah. Because, like, is he t- mm. up there, I, I think. I don't, I don't know, know, man. Don't know it's been that. a long time. I think, I think, he, I think, I thought he won a PGA Tour a couple years ago. Yeah, he, yeah, he did come back for that one PGA Tour. Well, anyway, yeah. not to talk about fucking Tiger Woods, but it's like, if all you did was cheat on your wife, then whatever, man. I'm not going to cheat on my wife. As, lo- as long as you had sex with 700 consenting women. Yeah. I don't give a shit. Yeah. I really don't care. The, yeah. the, the fucking president of the United States doesn't hold himself up to that standard anymore. Hello. You know, yeah. if all you did was cheat on your wife. Like, that's the world we live in now. You gotta, I mean, you got to figure that out with you and your wife or yeah. ex or soon to be ex I'm sure your wife has a huge problem with the <laughs> fact that you cheated on her. I certainly don't think that you're a fantastic person no but as far as like Liking canceling your, your whole career you know like i don't think tiger woods deserves to lose his life because he cheated on his wife with 700 women no he do, I, do i think to, that like, go he into should, therapy and figure some shit out do i think that he should definitely have a conversation with his wife about the fact he's having sex with 700 people then yes yeah. of course i think that but like that's for that's for Tiger Woods and his ex wife to figure out. Yeah, you know? exactly. That's 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 not and, anything and, and I it, need to get involved. It is in two thousand illegitimate children <laughs> that he spread his seed across the world. I don't know that he did. Did he do that? Yeah, it was a joke. Okay, I was joking. Um, but yeah. So as long as it's not a human rights violation, I'm just gonna keep. I'm just gonna keep. Like nobody's yeah. perfect. There's no such thing as a non-problematic fave. We all thought Terry Crews was an unproblematic fave like two years ago. <laughs> now look at now look at him. Yeah, you got Roxanne Gay hitting up his mentions, being like, "Stop talking about this. You're not smart yeah, enough just... to do it." <laughs> I love that she straight up was like, you're not smart enough to talk about this, yeah. so you should stop. Yeah, she, you saw that tweet, right? Yes, yeah, I did. That's 100% what she said. It was, it was said. great. And like, I I've, told, <laughs> I've told people before on this podcast to read Roxanne Gay. Or, or if you have if Twitter, at least follow her. If that's not a good enough reason, I don't know what else to tell you because she's the best. Roxanne Gay is great, great on Twitter. Great. She's really scathing. I love her. I know. <laughs> I know. But also, like, I can also tell that she's tired. Well, and she's I just want educated. someone to be nice to Roxanne Gay. Yeah, Roxanne yeah. Gay reminds me a little bit of my grandmother. Someone who, like, knows a lot and, like, is quite smart and is frequently right. Yeah. But just, like... Nobody fucking listens to her. It's just putting out fires around the yeah. social world, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. But, yeah, anyway, well, you Roxanne know, Gay, will you be my grandma? Roxanne Gay, you want to come on the podcast? <laughs> what the hell will we talk about with Roxanne Gay? Actually, I could probably think of a couple of things to talk about with Roxanne Gay. That would be up, that would be a Cam up. is gonna listen podcast for most <laughs> yeah, of that, I yeah. imagine. And Sam is gonna 
freak the fuck out yeah. podcast. Because because I got Roxanne Gay on the yeah. podcast. I emailed yeah. her like, hey, you want to come do a podcast? We have 87 subscribers on YouTube. And she was like, <laughs> sure, I could use the publicity. Not. What? <laughs> you have any idea? We'd be sending out the wrong message if we got Roxanne Gay on our podcast. Because they would listen to that one podcast and then maybe like, Episode 50. They'd be like, cool, maybe next time they'll have, like, AOC on. And they're just like, nope. Yeah. Just me and my dumbass. And then we start the next that podcast with, like, hey, guys. And it's like, you know. Welcome <laughs> welcome to the fart episode of the, che- the CSP. C stands for cheese. LOL. Random. Rawr. Do you remember that era of the internet? Oh, I've been LOL, there, done random. that. Went to Blue Notes, got the t-shirt. Oh, dude. Sporks, am I right? Sporks up. Spork! Oh, dude. Sporks are the best. Oh, but what are we going to do with all this unicorn bacon, Sam? <laughs> unicorn bacon, don't make it <laughs> I'll tell you what we're going to oh, do with it. God. We're going to end the podcast.